I was at a barbecue restaurant last night, but there were like 62 group of people waiting in front of me. And now it's 4 p.m. in the afternoon. I just want to get a croissant. But look at this lineup. And the last time I can remember, like when I was in Canada, um, Chick fil A just opened up its first restaurant in Toronto. Chick fil A! And maybe during the weekend, I line up a AAA inside a food court. And this question came up to me. Why is it more frequent that I have to line up for a table in China? I'm not talking about people lining up for the new Nike sneakers. And this gentleman, he just asked me if I don't want to line up here. I can pay him like 50 RMB per hour to line up for me. And apparently it's a business. People pay him to do that. That's why he's here. He's not the only one. There are other scalpers here, but they're not here for new iPhones or concert tickets. Instead, they buy bread and resell them at inflated prices. I know, you're probably gonna say like, because China has a population of 1.4 billion people, but at some places, there's never a line. What did he say? <laughs> that guy's not joking. There's literally 131 tables in front of me. <laughs> I know it's probably ridiculous for many people. Why would anyone wait forever for food? That's why I want to tell you a bit more about the competition of selling food in China. It's different, trust me. Although the Chinese catering market has been hit hard by the pandemic, COVID-19 has also accelerated the restructuring of the industry on the other hand. The estimated annual revenue of Chinese catering sector in 2021 is 4.7 trillion yuan. What I know you probably don't have an idea of how much that is, but let me tell you, on a per capita basis, the average Chinese pay restaurant owners 3,300 yuan last year for food. That is 4.1% of the total GDP. However, Americans spend only 0.06% of their GDP on catering industry. Well, there is an old saying in China that 民以食为天 It means that food is always first and foremost for the people. Well, at least that's true for me. <laughs> but something you probably don't know is that the elimination rate of Chinese catering industry is as high as 80%, which means every eight out of 10 restaurants will not survive. So what do you do under such a competitive environment? You really have to step out your game, like upgrade everything. I'm not just talking about your food. I'm talking about like your decoration, how you do your marketing, and how you promote yourself on the internet. Everything matters. At this noodle restaurant, I am willing to line up for an hour because I know it's good and I've tried it multiple times before. Of course, the good ones become better in every aspect, including the reputation. Look how thoughtful this small restaurant is. The waitress just told me there were plastic bags in the drawer to put my mask away. Right, it's so far my favorite noodle spot in Beijing. For the longest time, I didn't want it to become so popular because I have to wait longer if more people come. <laughs> but yeah, it's so good that it has been added to the Michelin Guide this year. My favorite dish here is this Danda noodle with peas. It's spicy and aromatic. understandable for a gourmet restaurant that has been open for a while, but what about this one? This 
croissant, no, this bakery has only been open for less than a month, I think. How do people even know if it's actually tasted and worth the lineup? Uh, this is Yelp, and this is the Chinese version of Yelp. Oops, my phone is laggy, but obviously you can tell the difference between the interface of the two apps. The Chinese name of this app is called 大众点评. Let's see what the name means. 大众, people. 点评, to comment. So the name pretty much describes what it does. And it offers way more than Yelp because it has information on food, bars, clubs, performance, entertainment, hair salon, gym, sports, blah, 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 etc. What I want to say is that it makes you addicted. When I see people posting reviews about cuisine I like, I will want to go to that restaurant and I will go eventually. The interface of this app is highly visual oriented. I just can't help to click on the image. You see, users not only delicately edit the photos, but also write down a detailed comment. I have to say that they're more serious than me writing my essay. But do you know who's posting these aesthetically pleasing reviews? The KOC economy is. Key opinion consumer are consumers who love to share their products and service reviews on popular social media. Comparing to KOL marketing, these KOCs don't need to have a big fan base. 1. Free food and service. 2. Maybe some extra money in addition to the first one. If you have like an okay amount of followers, restaurants then will pay you to write reviews. And 3. Of course, popularity and clicks. And some KOC will voluntarily write review for some popular source because they're popular and people want to see them. It's just a layer of beef within two layers of bread. Nothing special. I don't really like it. I don't know if it's because the cream is too thick or because I waited too long and my expectation got raised up. <sighs> Another thing is that why can we just wait till the hype is gone? The bandwagon effect. And this I will not elaborate because it's the same everywhere. And that's all I want to tell about lining up in China. If you like today's content, you know what to do. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.